you've messed it up. You're stupid. But the left is going nuts over this brand new documentary that's supposed to be coming out on FX on Friday. And it's about Norma McCor- uh, Norma McCorvery. McCorvey? McCorvey. I think that's how to say it. McCorvey. Now, for the 98% of you that don't know her, and by the way, I'm in that 98%. I just now learned who she was today researching this story. I mean, you can tell. I, I didn't even know how to pronounce the woman's name. So I've never even heard of this chick. So here's the backstory. Uh, she's Jane Roe from Roe vs. Wade. So you may know that in Roe vs. Wade, there was actually an anonymous plaintiff, and that plaintiff was Norma McCorvey, but that they didn't know that until years later, and so the plaintiff was completely anonymous even after the decision came down from the Supreme Court. We didn't learn who the identity was until like a decade later or something like that. Anyway, so I learned a little bit about her. I learned a little bit about her background. And guys, her life is a royal mess. Like, regardless of where you stand on pro-life, pro-choice, whether you think she's a good person, a bad person, her life is a mess. And based on this, she had to deal with it. And some of it's not her fault. Like, she had to deal with child abuse. Well, that, that's not her fault, but that's also part of the reason that she's kind of messed up. She also had a teenage marriage that... Uh, was very unhealthy, didn't last, and then had a bout with lesbianism and w- had a girlfriend for a long time who the, she then renounced in the 90s and uh, said that she had come out and converted as a Christian, but that wasn't necessarily what happened and it wasn't legitimate, it wasn't real, it was all an act, and we'll actually talk about that a little bit later in this same segment. And then she's had three children wound up keeping the first one and gave the other two up for adoption, which, I don't know, considering the circumstances of her life, that's probably a really good thing that those kids uh, went to different families. But apparently, there were also some discrepancies with how all this played out. For example, in the case that we're talking about with Roe v. Wade, there was a time where she had claimed that that pregnancy was the result of a rape, Then she came out later and said that she was lying about it because originally it wasn't rape. And then she said, no, it was rape. And that's how I got pregnant. And then later she admitted she made the whole rape story up. So like this woman is, you know, a prime candidate for the Jerry Springer show is probably the nicest way to say all of that. But uh, there's a quote here by her that I think is really telling quote. I know, of how, I know how I felt when I found out that I was pregnant and I wasn't going to let another woman feel that way. Cheap, dirty, and no good. Women make mistakes. They make mistakes with men. And things happen. It's just mother nature at work. You can't stop it. You can't explain it. It's just something that happens. And that, of course, is, is talking about when she made the decision to get an abortion, which, by the way, wound up not happening because the case got tied up in the court And she had already given birth by that point. And so what happened is that son or daughter, I don't know which, wound up going to adoption. I really wonder how the family that wound up receiving that baby feels about whether or not she chose to abort her child or adopt. I bet they're probably pretty glad that she wasn't able to get an abortion, that she did instead have to give her child up for adoption. Uh, Granted, I, I don't know, and I don't even think there's legally a way to find out how who wound up with that baby or how that happened, but I, I tend to imagine they're pretty glad that the law did not allow her to get an abortion at that point. But nonetheless, the essence of this quote is just completely wrong. And what I go back to is saying, well, I felt when I, I found out that I was pregnant, I felt dirty and cheap and no good. That wasn't the pregnancy. That was because of the sex you were having regret based on your decision. And and she goes on to explain this, that women make mistakes and they make mistakes with men. Well, yeah, but the answer to that mistake is not killing your child. That's the thing. That's not going to change the fact that you slept with somebody that you shouldn't have. Here's the issue with the whole free love movement and you should be able to have sex with anyone. and, And this is actually the prime ground zero, I guess you would say of how we even got to a culture that can be accepting of something like abortion, as atrocious and vile as it is. 
there's a lie that's being told here and has been for decades now that human beings naturally are built or well they're not really even designed they're just evolutionary creations even creation isn't a good word it's hard to even describe this they're that we're basically all just sentient rocks and that we're just acting out in a play the way that we always have that we don't really have free will and that ultimately we have suppressed our sexuality and so opening up the sexuality to everybody and you can just have sex with ever whoever you want to whenever you want to that that's something that's going to be liberating and psychologically better for us it's a lie even women that see no moral scruples whatsoever with sleeping around with sleeping with as many men as they want to they feel that regret now they can deaden themselves to that regret over time but god didn't design us that way he didn't design us to have multiple sexual partners. Even men who, frankly, probably handle it better than women, just because you know we're more sexual beings than they are to some degree, uh, we can't handle it. It's psychologically not good for us. We're not designed to do that. And so this is especially true with women, although it's true with men as well. There creates inside of us a contradiction our conscience starts working on us and there is an awareness by us psychologically and spiritually that we've done something wrong. That we have basically allowed ourselves to be used as, and I know that I'm getting a little bit risque here, but there's not a more polite way to describe this. We have allowed somebody else to use our bodies as their self-pleasuring device. When we have sex without any commitment, when we have sex without a close relationship with that person, with that level of monogamy and intimacy that was only intended by God to happen between a man and a wife, then all of a sudden, something snaps inside of us, and we are aware of the fact that we have done wrong. I don't doubt the woman's feelings. I imagine that when that happened, she did feel dirty and cheap and used, and that was a bad feeling that she didn't want other women to experience. That sentiment is probably 100% correct. But that didn't come from her getting pregnant. That came from the sex. That came from her knowing that she did something she shouldn't have done. And so, the answer to that is not to kill the baby. Heck, that makes it worse in most cases. There's a reason there's a psychological damage that goes with abortion. There's a reason that women, even if they're pro-choice, feel depression after going through a traumatic experience like that. And so ultimately, it really does highlight one of the primary issues underlying the entire pro-choice movement. That... Th the action that creates that is wrong because you can tell in the way she talks about it. She's like, it's just mother and nature at work. It's just, you make mistakes and it just happens and there's not much you can do to control it. No, you can. That's the thing. You have the option of abstinence. You have the option to not jump in bed with people to whom you are not married and you don't have a firm commitment with. And that's really the issue that's underlying all of this. And so apparently the same woman in 1995 wound up actually converting to the pro-life movement. And apparently that was a lie. According to this new documentary, and they have it, a recording of her in her own words, and, and this is what has been making the news rounds today, that she didn't actually convert, that she didn't actually become a Christian, that she did not actually become somebody that was pro-life and change her beliefs. She did so because she was offered a lot of money for it. Now, I'm guessing there are probably some details left out of that. I don't know. Frankly, I don't think that it makes much difference. But ultimately, when she reveals that she was paid to convert, that this wasn't something that was genuine, the director of the documentary, and based on what I read in this thing and in this article by the LA Times, I tend to agree with him. It seems like she was used by both sides. In other words, that she was young and vulnerable and, let's face it, her life is not exactly together. And that's probably part of the reason that she went into this case with anonymity, 
as opposed to just being who she was and, and revealing that to everybody from the onset is because the pro-choice movement knew, look, this is not a good person to be our spokesperson. And so that's what happened, and they went forward with that. But the funny thing about the left, and I think that I should let somebody on the left speak for themselves, and it almost wouldn't be a, da a, a double daily dose of stupid if we didn't have AOC mentioned in it at some point. You can see this tweet by AOC. This is what the people on the left are celebrating, finding out that her conversion was not real. So this is Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Wow. Norma McCorvey, a.k.a. Roe of Roe v. Wade, revealed on her deathbed that she was paid by right-wing operatives to flip her stance on reproductive rights. So like many things in the right-wing right -wing operations, it turns out a huge part of the anti-choice movement was a scam the entire time. Well now, guys, you know how often I make fun of AOC. But here she has a great point. Because every pro-lifer I know base their stance off of Norma McCorvey. I mean, whenever I ask somebody on the street, whenever I meet somebody that's in the pro-life movement, wherever I see somebody that's protesting outside of a Planned Parenthood or somebody that's there at the March for Life in D.C., and I ask, so, just out of curiosity, why are you pro-life? Like, oh, Norma McCorvey, it's no doubt. She's definitely the reason that I'm pro-life. I've never even heard of this chick until today. And granted, maybe that's because I'm younger, maybe because back in 1995, I was far more concerned with whether or not I was going to have a strawberry or a chocolate Pop-Tart for breakfast. But the point is, the idea that she is somehow instrumental to the pro-life movement, and to put it in AOC's words, that a, a large part of the pro-life movement is just a complete scam, I don't know of anybody that based any of that on it. Now, if there were pro-life people that actually did pay her to do this and paid her to be a spokesperson, knowing that she wasn't really a pro-life person and didn't really change her beliefs, that's kind of a rotten thing to do, and it's definitely not good, but the idea that this somehow significantly damages the pro-life movement, that all the pro-life people would suddenly be like, yeah, we're cool with baby murder, I mean, now that Norma McCorvey turns out to be a fraud, well, yeah, just kill as many of them as you want. That's just retarded. Nobody on the left or right could seriously look at this and think that this is going to be a significant blow to the pro-life movement. Again, I don't even know of anybody that knows about this. This is the first time I've even hearing this story. I had no idea who this person was. And even if somebody that were really big into the pro-life movement even somebody that really were preaching this night and day, somebody like, uh, you know, the, the founder for the March for Life or some, somebody like that, uh, the, the woman that is depicted, obviously not the actress, but the woman who is depicted, Abby Johnson in, in, plan, uh, in what is it, uh, Unplanned, the movie Unplanned. If it turns out that she says, you know what, it was all a farce, I was just paid by pro-life people, and uh, I was never really pro-life, I mean, yeah, that would suck, but is it going to change my stance on pro-life? No. That's not the reason people get into it. That's not the reason people believe that killing a child is wrong. And I really do think what's going on here, too, because you have to be ignorant of history to even believe that. Remember that this woman converted in 1995, does AOC, I mean, granted, she's the same age as me, so she was probably worried about her Pop-Tarts when 1995 was going on as well. Uh, does AOC really think that there were no pro-life people before 1995? Like, that this is the, the big nexus of the pro-life movement, and this being gone now creates a significant blow to them? Like, she's living in a fantasy world if she believes that. Actually, I think that's part of the issue, is that AOC back in 1995, never matured past that point. <laughs> that unlike the rest of us, she was still primarily worried about what flavor of Pop-Tart she was going to have for breakfast. <laughs> but anyway, um, it does, though, highlight a giant difference in conservative principles and ideas and liberal principles and ideas. Generally speaking, people on the right, they don't base their ideas on people. Their ideas are based on a series of logical conclusions they have derived from their own ideology. 
Now, those ide ideologies have different origins in different places. Some people might, for example, be pro-life because the science suggests, and, and it, because it's correct, that the thing growing inside a woman's womb is indeed a human baby. It has the human baby DNA, it has human baby parts, there's no chance that it's going to be a dog or a hippopotamus or a giraffe. It's a baby. And it doesn't have the same DNA as the mom, ergo it must be a unique human life. There are people that come at it, of course, from their religious perspective. That's the one that I come from, even though I agree with the scientific perspective. That it's because the child has a soul. And because it has a soul given to it by God, then it is wrong morally to kill that child because it is a unique human life. There's different ways that you can arrive there. But the point is, it wasn't based on a person. So much on the left is based on people. They have to have a community of agreement. It's one of the reasons, for example, they fought so hard for things like gay marriage. Because to them, it's not enough for them to believe it. They have to compel other people to believe it. They need that community of agreement because in their mind, there's no such thing as objective morality. Therefore, they have to have a majority of people agreeing with them for their belief to be real. If you don't, because if you believe in objective morality, it doesn't matter if you're the only human being on the planet that believes that you believe it to be right. The left doesn't have that. They have to have a large group of people believing it with them, or they assume that it's not correct. And basically, they have to conjure their beliefs out of the masses. That's the difference. And that's what this highlights. They think that because a, I guess, formerly prominent person in the pro-life movement, again, I've never even heard of her and I've been pro-life my entire life. I do this for a living and I still have no idea who this person is. But apparently somebody that at least they see as being a big deal in the pro-life movement having a false conversion, they think that that's going to change people's minds or that's going to be a big deal. No, it, it might have... Like, if Bernie Sanders came out yesterday and, and said that he was a capitalist, that probably would put a significant de dent in the ideas of socialism. The opposite isn't true. The right just doesn't think that way. My mother always said, if you can't say something nice about somebody, then you're probably talking about a leftist. Nah, I kid. But seriously, it would really help me out if you would like this video and subscribe to my channel. I'm sure my mom would appreciate it.